Welcome everyone. Thanks for attending today. I'm Dave Alexander, Marketing Manager for Sony Healthcare and our medical integration products. As the worldwide leader in imaging technology for minimally invasive surgery and experts in 3D and 4K video technology, Sony brings a wealth of value to the industry, equipping clinicians with tools that elevate the level of care they provide on a daily basis. Today, our experts will provide an overview of the technology behind Sony 4K 3D displays, video recorders, both of which are used extensively in robotic surgery and other 3D surgical imaging systems today, delivering enhanced visualization for surgical teams around the globe. We'll also present the Sony Nucleus platform and the many benefits it offers when integrated in robotic surgical suites and other areas of the facility and specifically how the highest quality 3D imaging can be maintained and utilized in training and education. Our presenters for today will include David Korowski. Based in the Chicagoland area, Dave is an account manager with Sony and has been in healthcare, specifically video for use in the OR, for over 30 years. Dave serves many key accounts with 3D and 4K video for robotics, ophthalmology, as well as neurology and other applications. After Dave, we will hear from Paul Nunez. Paul is a systems engineer here at Sony and Healthcare Group based in Arizona. And Paul has been in audio video engineering for over 30 years. Paul has worked in healthcare video broadcasting as well as many other aspects of video integration in and out of the clinical space. Very important. There will be time for Q&A at the end of today's session, which we, of course, value highly. Please do use the on-screen utility to submit your questions at any point during the presentation. Also, some of our key brochures and cut sheets are available for you to download here during the session, also in the interface. These gentlemen are indeed subject matter experts, so please do capture any questions you may have, no matter how deep in the utility. If we run out of time, you will still receive an offline response to make certain we get you the information. With that, again, our thanks for your time today. Happy holidays, everyone, and we'll toss it over to David Korowski. Dave? Season's greetings and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is David Korowski, and I'm one of Sony's business development managers within Sony's healthcare division. I'd like to share with you the benefits of Sony's 3D technology for robotic surgery. During this discussion, we will need to take a deeper look into how 3D works so as to give you a better understanding of Sony's 3D products. Sony's 3D offerings include products for visualization, recording, cameras, and our Nucleus video routing system over IP. When we discuss 3D for robotics, we are not talking about the types of robots used in the Terminator movies. or the lovable Sony Ibo robotic dog that has 3D visual perception to be able to play games. If you'd like to get one in time for Christmas, they're on sale now. Robots are more prevalent than ever in the healthcare industry. You can find robots in all sorts of the areas within the medical community. Rehabilitation areas, pharmacy assistants, mental health, personal well-being, and of course, surgical robotic systems. For this discussion, we'll be talking about high-definition 3D for use in robotic surgery, such as the one we are seeing here, whereby the surgeon controls the robotic arms all the while viewing the procedure in their very own 3D perspective. Although surgical robots can look a little scary at times, they are a great benefit to surgical procedures, as is our Sony's 3D displays. Robotics have made significant inroads into being able to perform procedures on many areas of the human body. Robotics attempt to improve patient outcomes by making surgery more minimally invasive, reduce blood loss, lower risk of infection, shorter recovery, and improved surgeon health. Multiple companies are vested in creating robotic devices for surgical modalities. Intuitive Surgical has proven to be one of those dominant players in this market for minimally invasive surgery. Let's take a moment and hear from Dr. Scott Magnuson from Florida's Hospitals Nicholson Center. The vision that we get from the monitors today makes the surgeon feel that I'm in, immersed in the operation versus looking at something two-dimensionally and recognizing 
that this is some sort of image produced by a camera. The clarity that we get in the system provides colors that are actually real colors. An example is blood. So in surgery, we have blood that we work with all the time. And when you're operating on a patient in an open field and you're looking at blood, all the colors are true, right? The new monitors today with the 4K and 3D technology, it actually looks like the real field. With a 55 inch monitor and the clarity that we get with this picture, it is magnified and it's exactly the same as if I was looking through a microscope. Recording today is critically important because before any other time, it was just a verbal communication of how I watched someone do an operation, but as soon as they left, all of those were just memories. It wasn't something they could always go back and refer to. Our surgeons come through the programs, we record their video, we give them a flash drive when they leave so they can review those videos, and we have areas of recommendation for improvement, skill exercises to help them improve so that in the end, it improves patient outcome. Listen here are some of the benefits to having 3D in surgery. Surgical assists can visualize in the same 3D visual depth perception. Training residents with enhanced visualization offers real-time observation and a better understanding of anatomical structures. 3D has given way to improve surgical techniques and the potential for more efficient procedures. Sony offers circular polarized visors for advanced protection, lightweight durable frames with removable shields that are replaceable. These shields allow you to visualize 3D comfortably and to view other priorities in the OR without hindrance. Let's now hear from Dr. Mitesh Shah, Professor of Neurological Surgery at the Indiana University School of Medicine. The best way that a team can be engaged is that they have a richer experience with the flow of the surgical case. So they see the anatomy, they see when there is a challenging part of the case, whether it's the scrub nurse, whether it's your assistant, and they can actually interact because they're looking at the same screen and watching and having the ability to actually help. And all these things are possible by looking at a very large monitor. One of the challenges that I always faced in doing surgeries that were very long surgeries like acoustic neuromas was, you know, I had to move the actual microscope thousands of times during the surgery because I wasn't able to see different planes or the depth of the plane I was trying to visualize. In terms of uh, the current model of the digital microscope and the 4K monitor, it's night and day difference in terms of how ergonomic the flow in the OR is. Veins that are still being fed by arteries that are shunting blood are oxygenated. They have a different color. Being able to see that crisper and cleaner with a high uh, resolution monitor is extremely important. Um, I think being able to distinguish what's normal and abnormal or compressed normal tissue is another feature that's very important for a high resolution monitor. Sony provides two models of 3D displays, a 31 inch version ideal for cart based or boom arm mounting, and a 55 inch version also ideal for cart based or wall mounting. There are different variations of the way 3D can be displayed and recorded for later viewing. Depending on the 3D content in glasses will determine the style of 3D created. Sony typically records 3D in a side-by-side -side format. Here is a sample of side-by-side -side 3D that was recorded on the Sony 3D digital recorder. The recorder records the left and right camera views that can then create a 2D and 3D simultaneous recording for a surgeon's presentation or training purposes. Sony's digital recorder records high definition 2D and 3D video. The recorder can record onto its internal hard drive, external hard drive, or onto Sony's Nucleus video server, which will be discussed later. Pictured here are some examples of medical robots that utilize 3D technology. Titan Medical, Intuitive Surgical, Transenterics, Synaptive Medical. Let's now take a moment to hear from Dr. Darren Swainston and Dr. Alex Lasani from Nevada's Mountain View Hospital. One of the advantages of having the Sony 3D monitor in there is we also have the recording 
unit to record in 3D, not just to visualize in 3D. So we can record that case in 3D. So at a later date, we can actually even show um, groups that are residents or other doctors if we want to train or go to a meeting in a 3D setting. I think uh, anybody who comes in to view surgery and learn from the technique would immensely benefit uh, from being able to appreciate the same depth perception uh, during surgical manipulation. Uh, the assistant is able to see uh, the tissue, the, the tissue planes, and uh, the area of operation with the same detail as the surgeon does. I think it translates to a more confident assistant and that uh, in turn translates to a safer operation. Now that Sony and their 3D monitor is coming on board, it's really adding another layer of helping everyone in the room and those observing. And me, my role now as a teacher, teaching others and helping residents learn, helping other doctors learn how to operate. So to have that collaboration between Intuitive Surgical and Sony is, is awesome. As I mentioned earlier, it should be noted that 3D is also prevalent in other specialties besides its uses in robotics. Thank you for taking the time with me, and now I turn it over to Paul Nunez, who will talk to us about the Nucleus Video Routing System. Paul? Good job, Dave. Excellent work. Not only is Sony a leader in 3D innovations for the clinical space, we're also changing the landscape of video integration. I'd like to introduce you to Nucleus. Nucleus brings video switching, image capture, video recording, broadcasting, and more to the OR. And without the need for AV techs or any additional support in the sterile space. Many devices brought into the OR today have their own display, which is great. But the problem with a single display is usually only the person standing right in front gets the best view. Think of uh, an ultrasound machine or a surgical robot, for example. Today, hospitals are designing ORs with multiple displays on the wall and on spring arms that rotate 350 degrees around the patient. With multiple displays, everyone gets a great view. So there's the use case for a video integration system. You need to be able to easily send video from multiple sources to one or more displays in the room. We're completely vendor neutral, so any device that generates video can be connected to Nucleus. Broadcasting allows us to stream video outside the operating room, which is becoming an important feature as hospitals try to do more with less. We now have the technology that lets one nurse monitor multiple ORs or ICU rooms. Nucleus and other video integration systems are an integral part of that solution. One of the most defining features of Nucleus is we have the ability to send very high quality video and audio over the existing hospital network using tried and true internet protocol or video over IP. We use the existing hospital network as the transport instead of running point to point dedicated video cables from each source to each display. And we leverage the features of most network switches to keep all that network traffic in the OR. So there's no chance that video from OR1 will end up on a switch somewhere else on the hospital network. As you can imagine, in most cases, this results in much less infrastructure cost for both existing ORs and new construction. You don't need dedicated conduit or a dedicated space to enclose all that AV equipment. And you don't have to design a traditional video switch for a particular set of inputs or outputs. A number of years ago, I worked for a video integration company that made a 16 by 16 video switch, 16 sources and 16 displays. The problem with that is while designing a room, if I had 17 sources, and only two displays, I couldn't repurpose one of my unused displays as an input. I would need to deploy a second switch at a very high cost, which would mostly go unused. Nucleus eliminates that problem. It's just the port on the network switch. It can be an input, it can be an output, or even repurposed entirely if necessary. Here's how it used to be done. You have your alphabet soup of video standards, and most of these are still in use today. 
all these input plugs, BNC, DVI, DisplayPort, and more would be sprinkled throughout the OR through various ports on walls or booms. The nurse would roll in an ultrasound machine, let's say it, it has a VGA output. And if she's lucky, there's a VGA input on the wall. Otherwise, she'd have to run a long cable to where the VGA port is creating a tripping hazard and, and possibly reducing video quality. Some devices have more than one video output. So a new nurse or a tech that's not familiar with the room can unknowingly connect a low resolution signal to the system, causing poor video quality and complaints from the physician. That video signal would run over conduit to a large AV rack, which was usually in the OR. Imagine the heat and noise generated by multiple video switches, scalers, controllers, video recording equipment, UPSs and isolation transformers, just to name a few, all in the sterile space. Clearly not an ideal solution, but that's where we were just a few years ago. We have a better approach. Nucleus uses an IPC or an IP converter to normalize the entire alphabet soup of signals into one uniform signal. As you can see, the inputs are all the video standards in use today and the output is an RJ45 network jack. During the installation process, we attach one IPC to every source, whether it's a fixed source like a computer or surgical light camera, or a mobile source that you would wheel into the room like an endoscopy tower or surgical robot. And then we attach one IPC on every display. That's the extent of the hardware footprint in the OR. No video rack, no additional fans, no dust collectors. And since the video connection between the device and the IPC has already been made, the user simply locates a Sony network port and plugs it in. That source is now available for recording, switching, or broadcasting. We support virtually any modality, standard definition, high definition, 2K, 4K, 3D, radiology imaging, surgical light cameras, PTZ cameras, glide scopes, microscopes, surgical robots, whether 2D or 3D, no additional hardware required. If it generates video, we can connect it to Nucleus. I mock, mocked up this uh, simplified view of an OR using a surgical robot showing the connection points to Nucleus. I'm not trying to pick on intuitive here. It was just easier to find their content online. So I use those photos. Nucleus supports all three surgical modalities. So you have your physician's console there on the left connected to Nucleus IPCs, which are shown much larger in scale so that you can see them easily. In reality, those IPCs are about the size of a small cigar box. We have a 2D and a 3D wall display. Each display will have its own IPC connected to the network. And there on the right, we have our 21 inch touch panel, our user interface, which allows a nurse or tech to easily control what content is shown on the displays. And the reason we have two IPCs at the console is so that we can feed the patient vital signs back into the console. Integrating with Nucleus is easy. And it's just one example of how Nucleus ties into a 3D surgical modality. The Nucleus IPC can generate multiple streams simultaneously. A high resolution, low latency native stream that connects directly to the IPC on the display. And also an HD proxy stream that's used for video capture, image capture, and broadcast functions. For 3D formats, we support top and bottom as well as line by line 3D. We can record multiple sources with various resolutions at the same time and we can capture images from various sources at the same time and broadcast multiple sources to different locations within and outside the hospital. The flexibility of, of this system is virtually unlimited and our existing customers are already coming up with new ways to use Nucleus. Our user interface shown here is designed to be easy to use and can be accessed with a 21 inch touch panel like you see here or via any local computer connected to the hospital network using a browser. 
only those sources that are connected in the room are shown. So in this case, we have three sources. We have a PAX computer, an inlight camera, and patient monitoring. And we have three displays. Just touch where the source and the in-display intersect, and that source video is automatically switched to that display. In this case, the inlight camera is routed to display one and two, and the PAX is routed to display three. You can also easily create tiling arrangements that can show multiple images on one display. Picture in picture, picture outside picture, quad, and so forth. I won't get into all the features here, but we support EMR integration, which allows the patient list to be shown on the touch panel for easy registering. We can automatically or manually upload content to PACs or to the EMR via standard HL7 messaging protocols. Nucleus supports rough editing, bookmarking, telestration, and more, and allows you to quickly capture key moments during your case to be located easily after the case. Initiating a broadcast is as easy as touching the source and then touching the broadcast icon. Once the broadcast is underway, any user with the right credentials can log into Nucleus and view the broadcast. Nucleus supports simultaneous broadcasting of 2D and 3D live content. So not only can everyone see 3D in the OR, anyone watching the broadcast outside the OR can get that same great immersive experience. We focused on tying 3D modalities with Nucleus in this webinar, but Nucleus can do a lot more. Once it's installed on your network, it seamlessly integrates with all clinical and non-clinical spaces, conference rooms, other ORs, pathology, wet labs, simulation rooms, doctor's offices, et cetera. With System Watch, we monitor all major elements of the system 24 seven, and will alert your clinical engineering or IT department at the first signs of any problem. Not only is integrating 3D modalities possible, with Nucleus, we make it easy. If you're a healthcare provider and you don't have the room or budget for a large infrastructure project, but you need this functionality, reach out to us and we'll be happy to provide a personalized demo or set up a proof of concept to see if Nucleus is right for you. Thank you for spending your time with us and we look forward to seeing you again. Don't forget to follow us on social media. And now we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about 3D for robotics or Nucleus. Thank you again. Dave, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about your experience in setting up uh, a 3D in an OR. Sure. Uh, depending on the system, uh, they have different video outputs and knowing uh, which is available, we typically grab the left and right camera image. And that can either go directly straight into a display uh, our monitors have the ability, I showed in my presentation, there's different formatting for 3D, side-by-side, -side, top, bottom, left, right, over, under. Um, a lot of people do it differently. There's no real standard to say, but uh, our monitors and our recorders can capture um, anything that's being put out. And like I say, for our displays, we can go direct into that to give you 3D. Our digital recorder uh, can capture that uh, uh, video signal left and right and simultaneously grab either the left or the right view to give you a 2D recording as well as a 3D recording. And then going into our Nucleus system, we can capture that as well. And we also, what I didn't mention is we have the ability for 4K 3D uh, when that becomes available. Uh, we're already there to be able to capture that. Great. And, and Dave, what about the field of view? So when you put the 3D glasses on, how far off to the side can I be and still get a great 3D image? Our monitors have a wide field of view, 170 degrees. So you can be off angle um, on that uh, on the monitor uh, to be able to view left or right as it's moving here. Uh, but it is a more focused uh, top and bottom. So you want to have that monitor angled towards you, but you have a wide field of view to be within that space. Uh, to view it. If you are uh, going above or below a certain uh, line there, um, you'll start to lose the 3D. It'll start to shift over into a 2D platform. So it is critical that you aim the display and angle that 
to whether you're sitting on a stool next to the uh, uh, the patient table or if you're standing to the side and have another display, um, you want to make sure that that's pointing at you. Very well. Yeah. And I think one of our attendees asked the question, how easy is it to record from the robot? Um, so remember, one of my slides had the, the user interface, and it's simply a one button press on the user interface to initiate recording. So you push once for recording, a, rec a little timer starts, and then you push again at the end of the recording. Um, it's, uh, it's basically one touch recording at that point. Another question from the audience is, uh, does it allow for telestration? So yes, uh, telestration is one of the licenses we have. Uh, so you're allowed to um, telestrate between yourself and anyone else on the network. Uh, you can have multiple users uh, you know, talking and discussing at one time. Uh, the idea is you have maybe a second opinion where the doctor in the OR is uh, talking to another physician uh, on the network or maybe you have another uh, chief of staff looking in on a doctor who's in the room. Many different use cases for it, but yes, telestration um, it is one of the uh, available options in the Nucleus system. Uh, another question, with video, with Nucleus, video storage is an issue. Well, what can be what? solved? Um, hold on, let me see, it's cut off. Yeah. Kind of a half an answer, uh, uh, half of a question. So, so video storage um, can be an issue when you're storing 3D and 2D simultaneously because you're getting twice the uh, recording ability. Our systems are uh, recording at about 25 megabits per second, which equates to about 10 gig uh, of storage per hour. And uh, as long as we understand uh, initially what the setup is and what the expectations, how many hours a day are you recording? How many ORs? How long do you keep it online? Uh, with that, we can calculate uh, a very good estimate of how much storage space is required. Um, typically, you know, when you're you're having a regular, uh, you know, maybe a four OR solution, uh, it's it can be somewhere in the terabyte range. Uh, some hospitals want to keep it for three months and then cycle the storage. Uh, other other situations is they want to keep it for much longer and we have to make sure we confer with the IT group within the hospital to make sure that they've you know, allotted the correct amount of storage for that. And, and we also have the ability to archive recording, which will allow you to record a source or multiple sources in archive quality um, bit rates, which uh, are a lot less than recording in full quality and uh, therefore will extend the, the life of your storage and the capacity of your storage by recording in archive quality. So you have that ability as well. Another question, is this something that has to be an institutional buy-in or could training and teaching labs buy it themselves? Uh, of course, we work from anywhere from you know, one OR up to many multiple uh, ORs. So if it was just a, a training and teaching lab, they can certainly get this. Um, the, you know, we can size the solution for the needs um, because this is mostly so software based. Um, really all we need is a couple of servers um, to do the, uh, the calculations for that. And when we have our initial consultation with the customers, we kind of figure out what size is, is required, how much storage capacity, how much computing power, uh, and we, we can size it appropriately for that specific customer. Any other questions? Somebody asked, can you record um, all sources simultaneously or multiple sources? And the answer is yes. But some of the other video integration companies on the market limit you to recording um, either only one source or, or a couple of sources with Nucleus. You, you can record everything in the OR at the same time. It's limited only by the uh, the, the speed of your network back to the uh, the, 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 the storage. And um, it's uh, just hitting a button on every source to initiate the recording. So the answer is yes. Yeah, just to add on to that, it, it does, um, it, it's very flexible in that respect in that when you typically buy a, a storage device, uh, it's limited to one or two inputs, but with Nucleus, you're not limited to that. Every single input that's put in uh, can be recorded. Uh, in some cases, we've done eight recordings at a time. 
uh, especially in hybrid labs, things like that, you might have multiple inputs that you want to record. So um, it's very interesting to, to, to work in those type of uh, parameters where you don't have the limitation of a piece of hardware that says you can only record one or two inputs. Uh, is the data stored locally within the institutional firewall or do they go outside the institution for storage? Uh, currently, it really depends on the IT people. The IT um, uh, would give us a URL or a, a SIFS connection that allows our system to do storage. Um, we just point to that storage. Uh, they really maintain the storage. We, can, we do, for smaller institutions, come up with our, our own on-premise storage. Uh, but typically IT is storing on the prem uh, with storage area network. And occasionally we do run into them where they're pushing it up to the cloud. So our system is agnostic when it comes to that. Uh, we just need a place to, to point to. And as long as that's given to us by IT, we can push it anywhere. Then there was, uh, this is more of a comment than a question. Um, there was a comment about, you know, the concept of 3D visualization uh, for the surgical assistants that are, you know, helping with in a, in a robot case. And, you know, is there a value for everybody in the room to see in 3D? The, the benefit seems obvious. So I, I agree with that comment. There is I've been in rooms where you know we've handed surgical techs and the assistants uh, 3D glasses, and the benefits is, are very obvious. They can they can see exactly what the doctor's seeing, and and they get a, a much uh, more immersive experience. Um, and the, the with the glasses, you can they're they're very light. Uh, you can keep them on for for hours, and um, it's very easy to just move away and, and see something else in the OR besides the 3D screen and still be able to, to see what you're doing even when you're not looking at the 3D screen. So uh, yeah, there I believe there are obvious benefits to um, having everybody in the room see in 3D. Thank you and for I that question. I can even add to that uh, also, Paul, as I, I've witnessed and been in there where they are able to see in that same uh, 3D perception and be able to grab a bigger bite of tissue that's necessary or be able to cut in the location that the surgeon wants. And I've even had a uh, surgical cyst come up and say, you know, thank you for this. The doctor is not yelling at me anymore because I didn't grab what he needed to grab in the right place or that. So it, it is beneficial uh, for them to see in the same 3D platform. Absolutely. Yeah, good point, David. So another question, uh, I'm going to direct this to David, uh, David Alexander. Uh, when is this coming to the market? Can we check out pricing somewhere on the web? So general pricing is created on a per project basis, as you could imagine, um, you know, the configuration capabilities and possibilities are very deep with Nucleus, um, everything from remote patient monitoring to record only systems to ORs to hybrid rooms to robotic suites, all, you know, kind of within its scope of work. Um, there is some published list price of some of the parts, but generally it's all custom configured. So it's not just right on online. When you get in touch with your local Sony representative, they'll go through the process with you to make sure you get completely accurate pricing. If you're a consultant and or architect, we'll follow up with you as well to make sure you have the ability to create a budget for a project and understand the you know, amount of, of expense we're looking at in these systems and various configurations. So the other part of that question is, when is this coming to the market? It actually received uh, FDA marketing approval earlier this year. It's been on the market uh, since the beginning of, of uh, 2020. Uh, we continually are making improvements about every every three to six months. We come out with feature updates uh, where we're adding new features uh, to the capabilities of the system based on feedback from our customers. Uh, another question with Nucleus, can each surgeon have their own file to be accessed later for editing or viewing? Uh, Dave K, do you want to answer that on CMS? Yeah, so uh, when you record within the uh, operating room and you set up for the patient file, you put in certain patient criteria, some uh, metadata information, and including that would be the surgeon who's performing the surgery. And once you hit record, based on that metadata information, it's going to open up a file within uh, the CMS system or buried within Nucleus that the surgeon will have their own location 
um, the surgeon then, uh, after following the procedure, would be able to find that file and be able to edit that file or share that file. If uh, there is a collaboration, they do have the ability to allow others to create a community for that file to have discussions or presentations. Excellent. So another question, can you start out with just the 3D displays uh, and then grow your system? So yes, uh, 3D displays allows everyone in the room to see it. If you have a teaching uh, opportunity, you can add recorders, uh, which are locally based. Uh, they would record in 3D and allow you to either send to Nucleus later on, or if you just had the immediate need without having to store it on an IT-based system, uh, you can walk out of the, the procedure on a USB stick that would be your recording. So. Um, you can take the modular pro, start with 3D viewing, then work to recording, and then uh, finally work up to um, recording and, and archiving on the nuclear system. Uh, another question for David Alexander. Sony is, is Sony seeing a growing trend with robotic facilities looking for a full integration solution like Sony Nucleus? Yeah, believe it or not, it's not the most, you know, logical thing when you think of a robotic suite that has primarily one source um, as needing, you know, an ability to switch video or record. However, recording, obviously, always a, a challenge, 3D and, and 4K, the Nucleus facilitates that. Sending imaging to other secondary monitors seems to be a primary use for Nucleus in robotics. Um, I've designed in the past suites where there's a central room for residents and others to view the procedures so they can gather around a large screen display, for example, typically in 3D, um, and view the procedure without being in the room, without being in the OR. And usually that's right outside so they can still be, you know, in touch with what's going on in kind of the control area compared to the room or, you know, compared to the information from the nurses that, that's coming in and out of the, the room. Um, but it's a great way to, you know, especially in the you know academic environment, to get the residents away from the primary surgeon during a case, but still be directly involved in, um, you know, learning and watching high quality 3D video. So it's used for that quite a bit. And yes, we do see a trend in that direction. You know, the, the need for switching and routing is there too, if you are. Um, recording and or communicating to a classroom or a lecture hall. Um, there's always things needed like confidence monitors so you can see what signals going out, uh, potentially monitoring of vitals and other things. Should you ever need a scope to be used on the fly, you can roll one in and record that, view that, switch that as well. So it's you know extremely functional in a robotic suite for, for, for many different purposes. Good point. You know, one thing I'd like to add is with Nucleus, you could you could have a, a, a room, you could re easily repurpose a room to be a, a, a surgical robot room and without losing any functionality. You can, uh, I, one example, uh, one of the facilities where we have Nucleus installed, they've, um, they've turned one of the rooms that uh, was traditionally used for robot surgery into a COVID room. And um, that, you know, prompted the need for them to move that robot into another OR, and they were able to easily do that without really losing any functionality at all, as far as recording and streaming and conferencing. So, so lots obviously, of benefits. in the past, undertaking any reconfiguration like that on the fly, involving um, you know baseband cabling to be put in, vast amounts of electrical work, um, Nucleus lets it happen on the fly with just data connection. Huge benefit. Good, quiz, hey. good questions, great questions, actually. Thank you. Yep. Hey. Anybody else have uh, questions? Going once. Just one final, we had um, a question I saw before, maybe it, it got squashed down. Um, is there any ability to use Nucleus with other systems directly? via API. 
Yeah, so so uh, Nucleus has a very robust API for those who are willing to do a little bit more development. Uh, so our user interface is based on our own internal API, which is an uh, application programming interface. So for instance, if there was a, um, a manufacturer out there who wanted their own look and feel, uh, we give them all the tools to make those changes so that their user interface is exactly the same uh, across their, their products. Uh, rather than using a Sony product look and feel, um, you know, the API allows you to develop it on your own uh, with the help of us, of course. And there was one last one in, in here. How and how frequent is the system serviced and maintained? So with the system, we uh, one of the things that we sell along with it is our remote monitoring service, our, our RMS. What this does is it's an agent that runs on our computers and it continuously monitors the system, both hardware and software for any anomalies. Uh, the idea being we could be alerted of a system uh, problem or issue that's arising before it's actually uh, seen by the customer. Uh, so this would send an alert via email to our network operations center, uh, which is manned 19 hours a day, uh, basically from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, East Coast time. And uh, within minutes, we'll respond uh, and, and try and intervene, troubleshoot, and fix the problem before it actually manifests itself to the customer. Um, it's just one of the added benefits of having an IP-based system in that uh, we really uh, probably do not need to come on site to make the repairs. Uh, we try and do everything remotely through software. Okay, David, no more questions. Did you want to wrap it up? Uh, no, that was it. Do submit any last minute questions that occur to you. You have a minute or two to do that. Again, we will follow up with you directly. To make sure you get the information you know, since we couldn't get to it. Here, don't be afraid of heady engineering questions as well. But for pricing and again, more information, be in touch with your Sony healthcare representative, your Sony other representatives, should you have any for any other product lines that you deal with, um, can get you in touch as well. But otherwise, that's it. Wish everyone to stay happy and healthy, stay safe, happy holidays. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.